What's up, guys? Welcome back. It's Freebie Friday, and today's winner is DG Downshift. Congratulations, my guy. You want a sticker pack and a Scrape City keychain. Uh, we're doing another giveaway, so you got to stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll give you guys the uh, details on how to get in on that. Um, this episode is going to be called Behind the Helmet because obviously we're doing an interview, and I want more people to get to know stunt riders that are behind the helmet, you know, because all we see is a motorcycle or the helmet, and that's what we know the riders for. So we're going to call this segment Behind the Helmet, and this one's with Top Notch. Check it out. guys we're here with Wyatt what's up everybody also known as top notch right you know it all right so it. where did you get your uh, IG name from uh originally actually when I lived in Atlanta from a buddy named BG he used uh -huh. to call me top notch uh I used to do a whole bunch of stuff skateboarding BMX rollerblade uh mountain bikes whatever he just used to always call me top notch because he thought I was top notch and everything but <laughs> that's what's up and my last name is Tipton so uh, I kind of just rolled with that ever yeah. since so that's perfect that's perfect so where are you from Originally, I am from here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Lived here till I was like uh, 10 or 12. Then I moved to California, lived with my dad for a while. Nice. Moved to Atlanta, moved to Oklahoma. Now I am back here in Vegas, and I love every minute of it. <laughs> Did a round trip, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's sir. what's up. Uh, how long you been riding for, man? Uh, I started riding in 2016. Actually, it was 15 when I got my first street bike. Mm. I bought an R6, uh, brand new off the dealership floor. Oof. Lasted two months <laughs> total that, but actually it was a blessing because uh, my insurance was crazy. My uh, finance rate was absolutely insane. Oh, so of course, yeah. After that, I bought an FZ, fully stunted that out. Uh, was a little bit of a learning curve on that because that bike's a little bit different, but actually- Real touchy still, too, right? Yeah, real touchy, yeah. a lot of engine brakes. So got rid of that bike, went back 20 years, got the F4i, <laughs> and yeah, I love the F4i, man. That's what's up. So what made you stick with the F4i? Uh, I think it's reliability and low maintenance. Uh, when I first got into riding bikes, I had no clue about any type of maintenance. Right. Couldn't, couldn't adjust the chain. <laughs> could barely lube the damn chain. Yeah, uh, definitely. So even taking a wheel off was a nightmare for me. I remember one time when I was trying to put on my dual caliber bracket with everything. It's my girlfriend saw me. It took me like three hours to get my damn <laughs> wheel on. Calling, looking on tips. I actually, and I actually didn't even get it on. I had to have my buddy come over and help me slide it on, and he got it on in like ten minutes. That's typical. Though. That's typical. Yeah, yeah. No, same thing with me. Like I knew nothing about motorcycles, and the only way I learned was going in and taking it apart and putting it back yeah, together. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Or you break something at the lot, yeah. and you have, you have no, no choice. choice. <laughs> you want to keep riding. Yeah, know? we're too broke to be out there trying to pay these, somebody. You can't take these bikes to the shop either because no, no, them no. dudes don't know what the hell they're yeah. looking at. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we don't touch that. It's liability. Yeah, That's too yeah, much for us. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. way too much. It's like cycle, if cycle Gear will charge you 50 bucks to put a tire on, and they won't even put on a used tire for yeah, you. Yeah, so exactly. What's the point? That's yeah. what we need. Uh, what major mods have you put on your F-Ride that you would give somebody that's you know just getting into stunt riding? The most beneficial thing that I've done to the FRI for my riding style is probably the banana seat. Um, it was also the banana subframe. Uh, it's so comfortable. You don't have that metal tail saver to land on. Right. Uh, it feels real great on your ass, on your knees, <laughs> whatever, you're, whatever you're jumping around. Right. Uh, and actually the grip on it too, that made a world of difference. I have a local buddy here in Las Vegas that makes those seats. And okay. uh, yeah, that with the FRI and the banana seat and that seat cover on there, night and day difference. Big time, big uh, you time. Don't, like, doing no handers you don't really have to hook your foot too much you, you kind of just stay on the seat and uh roll with it that's what's up man that's what's up uh what got you into stunt riding originally what got me into stunt riding uh, i've always been a fan of action sports like i said but when i was living in atlanta i used to drive downtown and i'd always see the dirt bike guys oh, rolling yeah. through the city and that's originally what i wanted to do so when i got my fc linked up with those guys and I used to ride with them all the time in the streets. Yep. Yes, I did used to ride streets. We uh, all start in the streets. We baby. all started in the streets. Everybody uh, starts in the streets. Got in a little bit of trouble, not in Atlanta and Oklahoma, but uh, I did have a blast with the guys in Atlanta. But yeah, the dirt bikes are different. They oh, have yeah. a different wild style. And I just knew that probably wasn't the best thing for me. So 
Definitely. Started ended up going to the lot, and that's where I really enjoyed riding. Yeah, definitely. I feel that the lot's a lot more safer because it's better to get kicked out than chased. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, you just get a warning and get yeah, to go home. Still. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully keep your bike too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what goals do you have for 2020? Uh, for 2020, I want to actually land more shows and actually do something with my riding instead of just riding. Right. Uh, I've been doing nothing but riding, and I think marketing is what I need to work on. So Definitely. For 2020, it's going to be marketing and trying to land more shows and actually awesome. do something with my name. Yeah, no, definitely. Because your name's out there right now, you know, but, you know, not a lot of people don't know about you yeah, still, you exactly, know, but yeah. you definitely have the talent and, you know, the drive to get what you want to get out of this. Yeah, you know? and I'm working on the whole marketing thing. It's just, uh, you know, trying to get merchandise, stuff like that. It all costs money. Right. And yeah, exactly. It's all a learning experience, just like how we ride. So. Right. And one thing a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, we don't get paychecks, you exactly, know, yeah. religiously every month, you know, we don't do that. Everything we do is from hard work or hustling, you know, doing whatever we have to do to keep our bike running for next weekend. Yeah, or, you may, you know, have, next you may have done something you're not even proud of to get yeah, your bike no, running. Yeah, no, definitely, you know, you, know <laughs> you might have to sell your last noodles or some yeah, shit, you know. Yeah. Uh, what, what tips would you give a new rider that goes out to the lot and wants to learn how to wheelie? Uh, I would say you don't need the fanciest bike. You don't need a handbrake. You don't need none of that. You can do a stock bike, uh, maybe a bigger sprocket for the lot. That'll definitely make it easier. But learn the essentials of riding. Right. Learn how to use the foot brake. Learn how to wheelie. Uh, learn the control of the bike. All that other stuff can come with time mm. and more practice. Right. Yeah, definitely. Like another thing I, I always tell people is like, you don't have to go to the lot and just practice wheelies. You can also go to a lot and get more comfortable with your bike, yeah, you know, exactly. learn how to do circles, you know, just using the foot brake, nice tight circle, figure eight and yeah, stuff exactly. like that. You yeah. know, you don't have to go to the lot all the time and try to crash yourself. Yeah, for um, sure. So you run clip-ons or dirt bars? I currently run dirt bars, as you can see. Yeah. Wrong way there. Uh, I used to run clip-ons. I don't have anything wrong with clip-ons, but I feel like the dirt bars just put you up in a better stance. And More of a wider feel. Yeah, too. exactly. For me, the lot riding is all about comfortability on the bike. So uh, the clip-ons put me real forward on this big <laughs> bike. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the FRI put me, uh, clip-ons put me too forward on the FRI. So once I went to the dirt bars, it made a world of difference and I feel so much more comfortable. Right. And actually, for some reason, when I was trying to pull through like the 50-50 or high chair or something with the clip-ons, it was a real struggle for me. Like I feel I like they're why. a little bit closer. Yeah, it could have been that. Yes. And I don't think you can get the full height that you can out of dirt bars. Definitely. So once I went to the dirt bars, even though you have this bar right there still, for some reason I can get my leg through like yeah, way easier. A lot easier. So uh, Brembo or Magura? Brembo or Magura? Actually, I'm going to have to say neither. Oh, uh, yeah? What you running? I run the Akasado. However you say it, Akasado, Akasado. No it's an Italian brand. Uh, a lot of racers use them as well, but it's just like a Brembo, I would say, but it might be a little squishier depending on what calibers you run. But right. uh, yeah, that's what I started with, and that's what I'm going to continue to run. Yeah, uh, Definitely, It's man, the best definitely. feeling that I've... And the Magiras seem too tight for me. I don't know, like I said, if it's the calipers, or, right. but the Magiras don't have any play. For lot riding, I think the play in the lever yeah. is what you want. Yeah, and a squish your lever. Uh, yeah, as well. some of it. You don't want too stiff of a lever. Yeah, definitely. Uh, any sponsor? Hey, hello. Thank you. <laughs> any sponsor you want to give shout outs to? Yeah, I have a few actually. Um, I just got on with Icon Motorsports. Congrats uh, on that. That's huge. Yeah, I've been trying for a long time, for two years probably, and finally got it going. So That's what's up. Congrats. I'm super stoked about that. Congrats Appreciate on it. that, man. Uh, Cox Stunt Parts is another one of my big guys. Uh, he does a lot for me that people don't see. Right, uh, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Yeah. He actually built my whole, or didn't build it, but he powdered everything, all the cages. My new bike is basically going to be like a whole Cox build. That's sick. Um, and I actually just got on with EBC Brakes, which is here local to Las Vegas. Nice. They have their U.S. headquarters here in Las Vegas. Even better. And they have been super supportive to me. They have given me so much stuff that I could never afford if right. it wasn't for them. So of course. Yeah, like they're making my bike look prettier. It feels better. I'm trying new stuff that they're trying out. Mm -hmm. So it's been awesome. Yeah, I'd also like to give a special shout out to uh, Elite Moto Tech and Hale Performance. Uh, they've also been a huge uh, benefit to my new bike and my current bike. That Elite Moto Tech clutch, I currently run the two finger lever. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt anything better than what I have currently. Obviously, there's also great companies out there, but I love the Elite Moto Tech. And I genuinely feel that it is, that's what made my riding a lot better. For a lot the clutch. smoother. Yeah, for the clutch work. And for Hale Performance, the lines, uh, the lines are awesome. I haven't actually ran them yet because they're going to be on my new bike, but I love the way that they look. They're skinnier, 
I've always ran local like hose uh, right. shop supply lines. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice to actually have something that's meant for the bike. Right, yeah. To be able to hold the heat, dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I haven't had any issues with the hose supply shop lines, but they don't look as cool as what the colored lines that you can get with some of the companies out there. Right. So, so do you prefer a uh, one or two finger over a one finger lever? I prefer why? the two finger. Um, I think it's because it fits better with the Akasoto uh, Master. It's cut, there's kind of some things in the way. Uh -huh. um, and I, I think it's leverage, honestly. I used to have a one finger on there from a different brand. Right. All I did was swap the lever to the two finger, same cable, no yeah. lube, nothing. Yeah. Exactly. And it felt a hundred times better. So. Yeah. I think it's all about leverage. The longer the lever, the more, you know. It's leverage. And truthfully, I think what it comes down to, too, is the routing of the cable. hundred uh, yeah. percent, You could just, you could show somebody just moving their cable a little bit. Yeah. And it would change up their clutch lever. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it'd be a lot day. smoother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We appreciate your time for stopping by and you know any other questions you guys have for top notch we'll leave everything all of his links his youtube everything like that below and y'all keep riding and if you're not riding get on a damn bike <laughs> you heard it here first all right y'all later for shizzle my guy bam <laughs>